The Rothmans Porsche is the quintessential Le Mans car. It's the car that was on my bedroom wall as a kid. The 956 won Le Mans four times. The 962 was the evolution of the breed, longer wheelbase. This is the pinnacle of 80s engineering. Big wings, massive power and colossal speeds. Now I ran out of time at Le Mans. There's no way I was going to miss out on driving this car, the Rothmans backed Porsche 962. So I've got Donington exclusively to take it out. And now that I'm about to climb on board, it does look slightly intimidating. This is original Porsche 962 from the 80s. Sometimes you just have to stop and look around once in a while because life moves pretty fast, but nothing moves faster than a 962 Le Mans car. And I've got half an hour to drive this exclusively around Doddington. It's a pretty epic privilege, and it's just such a pivotal part of the 1980s Group C racing scene, which arguably is the greatest era of motorsport of all time, ever. All right, it's a green light. Here we go. All right, second down to first, across the dog leg. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Le Mans in 1985. This car took pole position in the hands of Jochen Maas in 1986. I've never driven anything like it and from the outside it looks like a real weapon. It only weighs 850 kilograms, about the same as a late 90s Mini and this 2.6 litre boxer engine is pumping out 600 30 brake horsepower, twin turbochargers, these triple K turbos, which I can already hear whistling in my ears. So it's very light and it's very powerful. And being a turbo from the 80s, there is going to be some lag. But this is a warming car to drive as well. I'm uh, just finding my feet, very respectfully feeling the brakes with these steel brake discs. They are easier to get on with because there's less heating process required to get them into an operating temperature so I can just cover them off without worrying too much that I'm not going to stop. Oh. <laughs> Quite big understeer at these low track temperatures at the Melbourne hairpin. Oh. But she does sit up and take notice when you get on that power and the turbo starts falling up. So I'm just creeping around. I mean, the throttle's so heavy compared to what I'm used to. All right, let's get this to the In the mid 80s, the Porsche 962 was truly unstoppable. The ground effect aerodynamics that sucks this car into the tarmac are what makes it so capable in the world's fastest corners. It could regularly achieve speeds of over 200 miles per hour through the Molsan kink and into an Indianapolis corner at Le Mans. Some of the biggest names in racing history have taken the helm of this very car. Bell, Stuck, Ix, Mass, Wallet, Schuppen, Holbert and Watson all raced this chassis, then add Klaus Ludwig and John Winter, and that's a total of eight Le Mans winning drivers in its period roster. This car raced at Le Mans three times, taking fifth in 1988, plus a pole position at Hockenheim to add to the tally. Superbike legend Valentino Rossi even took the wheel at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in 2015. It's one of only six works Rothmans cars ever built, and when it goes to auction on the 9th of June, it'll mark the first time a works campaign Porsche 962C has ever been publicly offered for sale or at auction. No big deal. getting in this cockpit is it's so retro 
and so familiar. If you've sat in a 1980s 9-11 road car, then you can basically imagine what it is that I can see when I look down with a few extra dials, like the boost bar for the turbo. But all the other gauges are basically from a 9-11. It's even got this little red ignition key that you turn on to fire up the engine. It kind of automatically makes you feel like this car is approachable. It's a dog gearbox, it's five speed synchro gearbox, which might surprise you. But this car was designed to be wrangled by Formula One drivers as well as amateurs. So they made it very user friendly. Derek Bell described this as really easy to drive. It's kind of like the ultimate compliment to Norbert Singer, who designed the original 956 Porsche. It's utterly dominant at the Mans, wiping out the entire podium on its launch debut in 1982. And this 962 is an evolution of that car. It was designed with a longer wheelbase so that it could compete in IMSA GTP racing in 1984. Other than that, it's really based on the original 956 concept, Porsche's first monocoque chassis <laughs> to take advantage of the wonderful Group C regulations that got rid of the concept of a, a prototype that would never see the light of day and replaced it with a bespoke two-seater special sports car series that really became so wonderfully popular in the 80s so popular in fact that the formula one chiefs eventually got it banned but in that time these things were just majestic in their time and i'm just starting to feel <laughs> the presence of this machine and it's a wonderful wonderful experience cost forgiving. I mean, it really is something you can just plug in and get used to quite quickly. Slightly cautious of the aero balance because I'm running a sprint nose section with a Le Mans tail, which means I've got more downfalls on the front than the rear than normal. So the balance should be quite pointy, but it's not. We've actually got nice aero balance. I'm just starting to trust my right foot. <laughs> to feel these turbos whooshing through, it's bloody amazing. Oh, very smooth, very linear. Everybody talks about 80s turbos and you know what a nightmare they were. This is something that feels very drivable, very user friendly. Yeah, sure, I could start pushing a little harder, but I'm getting a very good feeling from this car start to smell now the brakes warming up and things are coming to life a little bit I've got more front grip now I can cruise around that hairpin for a big car surprisingly nimble oh, yeah. <laughs> never mind my manners I've given a 7,000 rpm limit and I'm going to respect that because I like the owners very much and this is the first time this car has ever been up for sale in a public auction it's quite the unique opportunity for someone to pick up uh, an incredible piece of living history. This is really the icon of Group C racing from the heyday when these cars were just so dominant. So when this car took pole position, this is chassis four, one of three racing at the morning in 1986. Derek Bell, the sister car, won the race. So this one had a bit of a torrid time, didn't make it through its couple of campaigns at the bomb. But this car's been around, as they say, since the Nürburgring, Spa, Monza, Silverstone, High Alami, Canada, Mosspoor. So it really has travelled. And then here we are, first time this car's been around Donington. What an honour. Just taking it through the craners and feeling the Jeep's building. It's, oh yeah! <laughs> now that I'm going a bit quicker, I can feel the aero balance very sharp on the nose. Whoever buys this is going to probably put more wing on the back or trim out some of that front aero if they want to drive it like this. Uh, but there's nothing, there's nothing nasty happening. There's no big weight transfers. You can see why this was so dominant in so many hands from Formula One drivers who rang its neck to the privateer teams and amateurs who were along 
for the ride to get to the front. It gave them an opportunity to compete with the works team. Many Le Mans 24 hours will work with those privateers. But this is the works one. And you know that everything on it is slightly sharpened, slightly enhanced in the way that only the Porsche engineers could do for their beloved 962. Ah, oh, beautiful into red gate. Just really sensitive in my hands. I can feel what the car's doing, it's talking all the time. The steering is not hot, it's stiffening up at the highest speeds and the way you'd expect as the downforce rolls on with these enormous wings. But it's very agile and it's not too heavy. I've raced cars with much heavier caster angles than this. And somebody thought about this and decided rightly to build something that you can drive hour after hour without being worn out. And that's what made these cars so wonderful in their day because Group C is all about fuel preservation. You're only allowed to use so much fuel during the 1,000 mile races and then the 24 hour races. You couldn't just throw a monster engine in it and light the candle. You had to build something efficient and that's what Porsche did so well with their fuel injection system, which was state-of-the-art, world-class. It meant they were unbeatable. It kind of also meant they were the first eco-warriors because Le Mans is what really proved and showcased and tested not just reliability, but the ability to use less fuel to create power. Just put a big smile on your face. Oh, I'd love to just dig these. Whoa. Just got a, quite floating on velvet through some of these medium speed corners. I'm just, just cocking my head through craters. <laughs> just can't stop smiling. I mean, it's just a boyhood icon. What a fantastic, fantastic car. There's one little tidbit that I do look like quite amusing, which is that one of these 962s re-emerged in 1994 to win Le Mans again even after Group C was kind of extinguished in the guise of a GT car before it was thrown out but it did win Le Mans as late as 1994 that's 12 years after the initial concept which is making it a pretty old car just goes to show you what a thoroughbred this is it's a timeless timeless Le Mans weapon always be a truly special machine it will never be looked back on people won't ever say that's a bit slow by modern standards you can stick this round them on now and probably give people a good run for their money nobody did it better than Porsche <laughs>